I've never seen a dirty Model A, and this one's no exception. Well, we also have been talking about timing a Model A. We read all kinds of articles and books and magazines, but it all boils down to one thing. You've got to get the number one cylinder, top dead center, so that the number one spark plug fires at just the right time. Now, my name is Tony Aiello, and this is Vic Duncan's car. Beautiful, isn't it? Real nice. But uh, no matter how nice a car looks, if it doesn't run right, it's not worth a darn. So we're going to time this car and have you look in and over our shoulder while we're doing it. Now, this movie is rated G-. minus. It's strictly for beginners. So I'm taking the kindergarten approach when I start by saying we should get our tools together at the outset and save a lot of running around. We need a large screwdriver, a small thin screwdriver, feeler gauge, half-inch open-end wrench, a cam wrench, which is desirable but not a must, and a crank for turning the engine. Retard the spark lever fully. Check this at the rear opening in the distributor horn. All timing is done in the fully retarded position. Before getting onto the actual timing of the engine, we should check the point gap. That's the maximum space between the two point surfaces. Hold the cam in place with your cam wrench. Loosen the hold down screw. And turn the cam until the rubbing block sits on the crest of the cam so that the points are to their full open position. Now with a feeler gauge, check the point gap. The correct gap is between 18 and 21 thousandths. If the point gap is out of tolerance, and it ought to be if your car has many miles on it, loosen the lock screw at the adjust block and turn the contact point in or out until the correct gap is attained. The blade of your feeler gauge should be placed flat and squarely between the points. The gap is correct when the movable point just offers a slight resistance to the feeler gauge. By the way, new points should be set at 21 thousandths because the fiber block rubbing against the cam wears faster on new points. It's a good idea to check the gap again after retightening the lock screw just in case the adjust is affected by tightening. You can do this, if you like, in a go, no-go manner, with blade sizes just under and over the gap you want. Now, take a good look at the point surfaces, too, and make sure they are clean, that they made flat and square with each other, and that they contact each other over the entire point surface. If they don't, adjust them by loosening the fixed point block and move it actually until you get a flat and complete contact. Burned points look like this. If your point surfaces are pitted or burned, replace them and enjoy an engine that idles right. A good set of points will have a dull, frosted appearance, but no mountains or craters. No need to replace them if they're good. Well, that's the initial preparation. Now let's set the number one piston at its firing position and start timing the engine. Remove the timing pin from the timing gear housing. Reverse it, and while pressing inward on it, turn the engine over slowly until you feel the pin drop inward into a small depression in the timing gear. Remove the crank completely and lay it on the ground in front of the car. Also, turn the pin around to its original position and tighten. Unless, of course, you prefer an engine compartment full of oil. With 
the cam screw loose, rotate the cam until the slot in the cam points to the number one contact. Unless you are really familiar, do this by temporarily replacing the distributor horn and set the middle of the flat brass conductor on the rotor to the number one contact on the horn. Now the Model A firing order is one, two, four, three. Now then, I recommend the use of a cam wrench. Advance the cam in a counterclockwise direction until we can see that the points are just starting to open. Tighten the cam screw firmly. Our engine should now be in time. There's an easy way to check our work, and we should do it every time. Lay the high tension coil wire within a half inch of a ground point, like an engine stud. Turn the ignition on, and slowly pull the spark lever downward. Our spark, from wire to stud, should occur when the lever is about a quarter way down the quadrant. That's the operation. About 20 minutes work for an average guy. Six simple steps. Let's go back and see just what we've done. Fully retard the spark lever. Check the point gap for 18 to 21 thousandths. Reverse the timing pin and turn the engine to find the timing recess. Loosen the cam and turn the rotor to the number one conductor. Advance the cam until the points just begin to open. Check our work. Button it up and get ready for a ride. 